All right, uh, welcome to the science lesson. My name is Teacher John. Uh, today I'm going to take you through science primary 5, term 1. In our previous lesson, we looked at types of bees. We said we have three types of bees we have queen bee, drone bee, and worker bees. So today we're going to look at swarming in bees. What is swarming in bees? Swarming is the massive movement of bees from one place to another for settlement or looking for a new hive. Swarming is the massive movement of bees from one place to another looking for a new hive or for settlement. Reasons why bees swarm? Why do bees look for a new hive? Why do bees look for another place to settle? One, when another queen bee is born or formed, when another queen bee is born or formed, when a queen bee dies, when a queen bee dies in the hive, when the hive is overcrowded, when the hive is leaking or damaged, when there is bad smell around the hive, and when there is too much noise near the hive, bees will swarm. They will also swarm when they are attacked by their enemies, and so on. How can we prevent bees from swarming? One, by planting flowering plants near the hive. Number two, we can prevent bees from swarming by setting the hive under the shade, by putting the hive in a noise-free area, then protecting bees from their enemies. When you protect them from their enemies, they don't swarm. Put them in a noise-free environment, they don't swarm. When you put them under shade, they don't swarm and plant in flowering plants near the hive. Then we have enemies, the bees. Bees have the following enemies. One, safari ants, pirate ants, honey buggers, wax moths, and wasps. These are enemies to the bees. Safari ants, wax moths, wasps, Hand badgers, pirate ants, and safari ants. These are enemies to the bees. Next, we look at the types of bee hives. Types of bee hives. Types of bee hives. We have two types of bee hives. We have traditional bee hive and modern bee hive. Example of traditional bee hives, we have chickens bee hive, tin hive, dark outlaw hive. Chigese bee hive, tin hive, dug out log hive. Advantage of traditional bee hive, it is cheap, it is easy to make because we make them from the local materials in the environment like sticks and so on. Uh, then disadvantages of traditional bee hives, the honey collected is dirty. So when you collect honey from a traditional bee hive, it's always dirty. The hive is damaged when harvesting honey. The honey, the hive is damaged when harvesting honey. It is not durable or it is not long lasting. Then we have our diagram showing a Chigezi hive. Then look at modern bee hives. We have two examples of modern bee hives. We have top bar hive and box hive. Top bar hive and a box hive. Advantage of modern bee hive, the honey collected is always clean. It is durable or long lasting, then harvesting honey is easy. Disadvantages of traditional beehives. Disadvantages of, of modern beehives, I mean. Disadvantages of modern beehives. One, it is expensive to buy or make. So making a modern beehive is very, very expensive or buying it. And a modern beehive has a queen excluder that prevents the queen bee from eating honey in the honey chamber. So they may ask the importance of a queen excluder. They may ask the importance of a queen excluder. A queen excluder prevents the queen bee from eating honey in the honey chamber. Um, a modern beehive has two chambers. It has a, a, a honey chamber and a brood chamber. A honey chamber is where bees make, where the queen bee makes honey from. 
A honey chamber is where the worker bees, sorry. A honey chamber is where worker bees make honey from. Then a brood chamber is where the queen bee lays eggs. Those are the two uh, chambers found in a modern beehive. Then the stuff that separates the brood chamber and the honey chamber is called a queen excluder. So this structure prevents the queen bee from eating honey in the honey chamber. Then you look at harvesting honey. Honey should be harvested in the evening. Honey should be harvested in the evening. Why? Why should we harvest honey in the evening? In the evening, bees are calm and settled in the hive. In the evening, bees are calm and settled in the hive because the temperatures in the evening are very low. But if you come during day, bees are very, very active. So if you try to harvest honey during daytime, the bees will sting you because they are always active at that time. So we always advise people to harvest honey in the evening because in the evening the temperatures are low and the bees are calm and settled in the hive. Equipment used for harvesting honey. We have around seven equipment for harvesting honey. We have a smoker, a smoker, gumboots, knife, bee veil, overall, bucket and gloves. Smoker, gumboots, knife, bee veil, overall, bucket and gloves. Let's look at uses of each equipment. Give the bucket. The bucket is used for collecting honey or for carrying honeycombs. A bucket is used for collecting honeycombs. A knife is used for cutting honeycombs. A knife is used for cutting honeycombs. Then we have uh, another part called bee veil. Bee veil is another equipment. A bee veil protects the face of a honey harvester from bee stings. A bee veil protects the face of a honey harvester from bee stings. We have a smoker. A smoker is used for smoking the beehive to calm the bees. A smoker is used for smoking the beehive to calm the bees. So the smoke is the one which calms the bees. But the smoker is used for, for smoking the beehive. Why do you smoke a beehive before harvesting honey? To calm the bees. Then we have gumboots. Gumboots protect the feet and the legs of a honey harvester from bee stings. Uh, gumboots protect the feet and the legs of a honey harvester from bee stings. Then last we have gloves. Gloves protect the hands of a honey harvester from bee stings. Gloves protect the hands of a honey harvester from bee stings. Then we have honey extraction. Honey extraction. Honey extraction is the removing of honey from the honeycombs. Honey extraction is the removing of honey from honeycombs. Methods of honey extraction. We have three methods of honey extraction. Floating the wax method, pressing the wax method, and centrifuging method. I repeat, we have three methods of harvesting honey, of extracting honey, I mean. Remember we say honey extraction is removing honey from honeycombs or separating honey from honeycombs. That's what you call honey extraction. So methods of extracting honey from the honeycombs. One, floating the wax method, pressing the wax method, and centrifuging method. Products got from honey. No, products got from bees. One, we get, uh, from bees, we get honey. We have bee wax and royal jelly. We have honey, bee wax, and royal jelly. Uses of honey to people. How is honey important to people? Honey is eaten as food. Honey is eaten as food. And when you eat honey, you get carbohydrates. That's why honey is sugar. It has sugar in it. It is sweet. So when you eat honey, you get energy. So honey provides carbohydrates. So it is eaten as food. Number two, honey is used to sweeten tea. Honey is used to sweeten tea. So if you don't have sugar, you can put the honey and uh, your tea will become sweet if you have no sugar. Then number three, honey is used 
as medicine for cough. Honey is used as medicine for cough. Number four, honey is a source of income when sold. Honey is a source of income when sold. We look at products got from bee wax. Products got from bee wax. Number one, we have wood polish. Wood polish is used to polish on the floor, especially if the floor is wooden. You can polish the floor using wood polish. Then we have shoe polish. Shoe polish is used for polishing shoes. We have floor polish. Floor polish can be used to polish cement. A floor which has cement can be polished using floor polish. Then we have candle wax. Candle wax. We have crayons and Vaseline. Candle wax is used for making candles. Then crayons for making crayons for writing and shading. Special ones used by nursery children. Then we have Vaseline. The Vaseline that we we smear on our body is made from bee wax, including other cosmetics can be made from bee wax. So we have wood polish, shoe polish, floor polish, candle wax, crayons, and Vaseline. These are products got from bees. That's the end of that topic. Uh, the topic was poultry and bees. So we are done with bees and poultry. We move to the second topic, which is measurements. Um, Measurement simply means to measure. Now, um, we are going to begin with regular shaped objects. What are regular shaped objects? These are objects with a well, a well defined shape. Regular objects are objects with a well defined shape. When we say they have a well defined shape, we simply mean that their shape is regular and it can be defined. It has a well-defined shape. Then in, we have examples of regular objects. We have cube, cuboid, brick, cylinders, tins, and blocks. These are examples of regular objects. We have a cube, cuboid, brick, cylinders, tins, and blocks. There's a difference between a cube and a cuboid. A cuboid, a cube has all sides equal. Uh, but a cuboid, some sides are longer than the other. So those are examples of regular objects. Why, do we, why is a cube called a regular object? A cube has a well-defined shape. Or it has a definite shape. Then we have irregular shaped objects. These are objects without a well-defined shape. These are objects without a well-defined shape. Examples of irregular objects, we have stones, keys, soda bottles, eggs, Irish potatoes, mangoes, and so on. Jack fruit, those are examples of irregular objects. Stones, keys, uh, soda bottles, eggs, Irish potatoes, sweet potatoes, mangoes, uh, jack fruit, and so on. Why are they called irregular objects? They don't have a well-defined shape, or they have an indefined. Uh, they have an indefinite shape. That's why they are called irregular objects. They don't have a well-defined shape. Then instruments used to find volume of irregular objects. When you are finding volume of irregular objects. We use what you call a measuring cylinder and an overflow can or eureka can. Irregular a volume of regular objects can be got using these instruments, a measuring cylinder and an overflow can, also known as a eureka can. So, method of finding, the method of finding the volume of an irregular object is displacement method. Some people call it measuring by displacement method. Measuring by displacement method. This method uh, can be used to find the volume of an irregular object. Let's look at an example. Find the volume of the stone below. One, this one is called an overflow can. This one is an 
overflow can. This overflow can has this part called spout. Then this one is called a measuring cylinder. Measuring cylinder. Measuring cylinder. Now, uh, we, are, we want to use this overflow can and a measuring cylinder to find the volume of a stone or an irregular object. So inside the measure, inside the overflow can, we have a stone. So when you lower, then this string helps to lower the irregular objects gently into the measure, into the overflow can. The, the string or rope helps to lower the irregular object or the stone gently into the overflow can. So when an irregular object or a stone is lowered in an overflow can, the water will be displaced and this water will pass through the spout. The water will pass through the spout until it goes into the measuring cylinder. So once the measuring cylinder, you can now be able to find the, the volume of the irregular object. So the volume of the irregular object is equal to the water displaced. So the stone will displace the water and the water displaced by the stone will go in the measuring cylinder. So uh, the water which has been displaced is equal to the volume of the stone. So you simply come and look at where the water will have reached that will be the volume of the stone. I say the volume of the regular object is equal to the amount of water displaced. Or the water displaced, the amount of the water displaced is equal to the volume of the stone or the volume of the irregular object. So the volume of the stone in this diagram is 20 cubic centimeter. Why are we saying 20 cubic centimeter? It is because it is 20 cubic centimeter because 20 cubic centimeter is the amount of water that has been displaced by the stone. If, well, if the stone had displaced 15 cubic centimeter, then the water would have just reached on 15 cubic centimeter. But because water has reached on 20 cubic centimeter, then this would be the volume of the stone or the volume of the irregular object. As simple as that. Then uh, we look at how do we find the volume of the stone on the second diagram. On the second diagram, we have an irregular object. This is a stone. So we want to find the volume. Now when you are finding the volume here, we shall say volume is equal to first level minus second level. Our first level is 10 cc, our second level is 20 cc. So how do you find the volume? You subtract 10 from 20 and you get 10 cubic centimeters. So let's learn how to how we can subtract that right. So we are saying volume is equal to second level minus first level. Our second level is 20 cubic centimeters. Our first level is 10 cubic centimeters. When you subtract, you get 10 cubic centimeters. So volume of the stone is 10 cubic centimeters. Volume of the stone is 10 cubic centimeters. Next, look at capacity. Capacity. What is capacity? Before we look at capacity, maybe we define what volume is. Volume is the space 
occupied by an object. Volume is the space occupied by an object. Then what is capacity? What is capacity? Capacity is the amount of liquid, the amount of liquid a container can hold. Capacity is the amount of liquid a container can hold. Then what is weight? So in other words, if a container can hold 2 liters, then the capacity of that container is 2 liters. If a container can hold 20 liters, the capacity of that container will be 20 liters. Then we look at uh, weight. What is weight? Weight is the gravitational force. Weight is the gravitational force. Gravitational force exerted on an object. Weight is the gravitational force exerted on an object. So in case they ask you uh, the difference between weight and volume, you can say volume is a space occupied by an object, while weight is the gravitational force exerted on an object. Let's look at mass. What is mass? What is mass? Mass is the amount of matter. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. O is the quantity of matter in an object. Then, mass is measured Mass is measured in grams or kilograms. Mass is measured in grams or kilograms. Then you look at instruments used to measure mass. Instruments used to measure instruments used to measure mass one we have beam balance beam balance a set of scales then we have scale balance.
scale balance. So all these three are the instruments used to measure mass. Beam balance, a set of scales, then scale balance. Then B. Mass is measured. Mass is measured. We said mass is measured in kilograms or grams. Then we have the basic units for measuring mass. The basic unit. The basic unit for measuring mass. The basic units for measuring mass is Grams. Then the standard units for measuring mass is kilograms. The standard units for measuring mass for measuring mass is kilograms. Basic units for measuring mass, grams. Standard units for measuring mass is kilograms. Then we have instruments used for measuring weight. The instrument used for measuring weight is spring balance. The instrument used for measuring weight is the instrument used for measuring weight the instrument is called spring balance so a spring balance is used for measuring weight a spring balance is used for measuring weight and B Weight is measured in Newtons. Weight is measured. Weight is measured in Newtons. 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 So it's as simple as that. Then next we look at uh, floating and sinking. Floating and sinking. Floating and sinking. Begin with floating. Objects that float on water are less dense. Than water. Objects that float on water are less dense than water. Look at examples of floating objects. Examples of objects that float on water. Examples of objects that float on water. One, we have dry leaves, feathers, Dry wood, dry wood, then number four, 
We have oil. We have plastic. And so on. So these are objects which float on water. Why do they float on water? They are less dense than water. They are less dense than water. They float on water because they are less dense than water. And the, why do leaves float on water? Why do leaves float on water? Leaves are less dense. Leaves are less dense than water. Leaves are less dense than water. Then look at sinking objects. Sinking objects. Or objects, objects that sink, objects that sink in water. Examples, we have stones, stones sink in water, we have nails, we have soil, We have Irish potatoes. We have keys. We have padlocks. They sink in water. Why do they sink in water? They are denser than water. Why do stones sink in water. Why do stones sink in water? Stones are denser than water. Stones are denser than water. Stones are denser than water. So that is it. Uh, make sure you do an activity. If you don't have the book, please come to school and buy the booklet. Otherwise, thank you so much for being attentive. May God bless you.